Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to the Carnegie Museum of Art. I'm Raymond Ryan. I'm the curator of the Heinz Architectural Center. We're the architecture department of the Museum of Art. Welcome to you all, and a special welcome to our delegates for the ACSA conference, the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture. Uh, you're very welcome uh, to the Carnegie. Uh, outside in the foyer, you, I'm sure you've already seen the beautiful exhibition of drawings uh, submitted by architects from around the country uh, for exhibition during this conference. And you may have seen at the end of the, of the music hall foyer the statue of our founder, uh, Andrew Carnegie. Uh, Carnegie supported, of course, the uh, coexistence, if not the cross-fertilization, of art and science, something of a chestnut, I, I know, but uh, evidenced here in Pittsburgh by four museums, the Museum of Art, the Museum of Natural History, the Science Center, and the Andy Warhol Museum, and by the creativity, of course, of our neighbor, now Carnegie Mellon uh, University, next door. Uh, here today, we're in the Music Hall. The Music Hall was completed in 1895 by the architects Longfellow, Alden, and Harlow. Uh, for the second phase of construction here in, uh, in Oakland, a decade later, Carnegie decided to place architecture um, at the very center of this complex of spaces in the Hall of Architecture. I noticed many of you were there earlier. That's our plaster cast collection, which is one of the three largest surviving such collections in the world. The others are the, at the V&A and at the Cité de l'Architecture in Paris. As curator of the Heinz Architectural Center, uh, we try to bring uh, architecture and architects from around the world uh, to the attention of our museum visitors here in Pittsburgh, and we continue to add, as Wang Shu and Lu Wen Wu uh, uh, had a very brief uh, preview of earlier this afternoon, uh, we continue to add drawings, models, and photographs to our collection. So it's my pleasure this afternoon to say a very f a brief few words of introduction before handing the mic over to uh, Ho Fu Wei, who will present the uh, our distinguished uh, speakers with the uh, Tau Sigma Delta Gold Medal for 2019. Uh, Wang Shu and Lu Wenyu established Amateur Architecture Studio in Hangzhou in 1997. I love this title, um, Amateur, uh, the way it suggests uh, a certain skepticism, perhaps, of the professional practice of architecture, but also, of course, in the Latin origin of the word, um, uh, some affinity to love, to care, and to idealism, perhaps, in building. Uh, that name and the decision by uh, Wang Shu and Lu Wenyu to base themselves in Hangzhou as opposed to one of the bigger Chinese cities indicates surely a determination to work at a distance from the corporate globalizing, perhaps homogenizing forces then beginning to be felt in China. Uh, there are many buildings for culture and education uh, are noteworthy for their use and of course reuse of natural materials, bricks, uh, pebbles, rammed earth, bamboo, many of which I'm sure we will see uh, this afternoon, and for massing that resembles on occasion formations found in nature. They have resisted the pressures, the allures perhaps of so-called progress, and offer in their tactile and carefully uh, scaled structures a pragmatic alternative, I would argue, to the dehumanizing forces of our time. A century ago, Pittsburgh was at the forefront of similar processes of industrialization and perhaps um, dispolation of nature. Uh, China's dynamic growth in recent years is in some way comparable. Uh, what might, I therefore would ask, uh, we here in America learn from China today, and likewise, what might Pittsburgh and um, similar US cities uh, offer to our Chinese colleagues? Um, amateur architecture, these architects who love building and buildings, remind us that uh, we should not forget where we are, and our agency as architects to ameliorate our world. So please join me in welcoming Ho Fu Wei, president of Tau Sigma Delta, as he presents this year's gold medal to Wang Shu and Lu Wen Yu. Thank you. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Ho Fu Wu. I'm the president of the Tau Sigma Delta Honor Society in Architecture and LI Art. And uh, it's my pleasure to really welcome you uh, to this uh, ceremony and then this lecture. And uh, I'd like to first like to thank the ACSA, the president, the board directors, and the uh, co-chairs of this conference, and also the staff that are making uh, this possible and then also very effective. Um, allow me that to first to kind of quickly introduce my board that we have uh, Vice President Michelle Reinhardt from the Georgia Tech, and then we have uh, Tom Fowler of uh, past president, immediate past president, 
and we also have our Icarus. Uh, is Icarus here? Savoni, who is the treasurer of our society. And our secretary left already for, the, for, his, for her uh, class, classes or back, back home with him. Um, so I wanted to really give a more personal and more interesting stories because I tried to introduce Wang Shu and Lu Wen Yu. And of course, Wang Shu, Wang is the last name, and then Shu is the first name. So just don't want to confuse that we call them the Wang Shu, but then the Wang is the last names. Um, it is my distinctive um, privilege and honor to introduce them. Uh, most of us have sold so much here and then see so much from the publication of what they have done wonderfully. And, uh, but during our you know, more personal introduction or interviews that I would like to share some stories that they have, and maybe not in the records, but then of course it will be more uh, interesting to all of you. Um, throughout, through our conversation that we have, that there's no doubt that they will struggle uh, through the time when they were first starting their company, or their, not a company, their studios. And uh, because Wang Shu was, uh, well, he was born in 1963, and then to come across the discipline of architectures, although his parents wanted him to be an, an engineer, as we all heard of that. And uh, finally, he did graduate from the Nanjing Institute of Technology and uh, got his Bachelor of Architecture and Master of Architecture, and finally he got his PhD from Tongji University. And uh, Wen Yu is three years younger, so it's kind of uh, um, behind him. But what I heard that uh, Wang Shu was a very rebellious student at school, that uh, the faculty or the, people, the professor don't think he's a good student. And then the, because he doesn't draw the way that they like to draw, they like him to draw. So because of that, you know that he has very few friends, good friends, and especially not talking about girlfriends. <laughs> and, but but uh, when, when you somehow recognize him and then the really um, admire or with his uh, you know, tenacity and then the insistence, so they, were, they got married in the 1990. During their early years, that they really worked very hard because when you has to work for the government as an architect in order to supplement Wang Shu's freedom of design as a practicing uh, architect there, because that's almost not heard of at the time of the China. So all the projects, most of them are governmental. So Wang Yu learned all the experiences in construction and management and uh, led uh, Wang Shu to be freely explore or doing his design, uh, per se. So I think they're one of the three, only three architects that are doing this type of work that off the mainstream that they have as a government control. So because of that, they are you know, working from uh, when you, as uh, supporting of the family, that working from eight to five for the government to earn the money to, uh, for supporting it. And but then after five, they come to the site where Wang Shu is already there from 8 o'clock till 5 o'clock working with the construction workers, and they continue to work till midnight. So it's how, de how de you know, devoted they are in terms of getting their job done. And they learn it from the construction workers about how they put things together, and they come in the innovatively of see how they can improve and make differences from the design point of view rather than just constructions. So that's how they you know, get all those uh, wonderful uh, projects that you can see later on. As the partners that uh, when they get in a project, of course they're very selective about the project they do. And right now they only take, or they started taking one project a year. Now they kind of been expanded so they double it, become two projects a year that they're doing it. And then maybe the third project will depend on the kind of small thing they like to do, maybe not necessarily architecture. And uh, when they get a project, I think Shu started with design ideas, sketches, but every sketch that he did has to get approval from Wen Yu, whether that's doable or beautiful or constructible or not. So the, our ultimate decision is Wen Yu has to make that uh, you know, approval before he can move forward. And they all very respect to each other, of course, and then they start to improve and using of the reused material that was you, you, you heard earlier. And uh, 
I see. I, I want to share another thing. The name of Shu is a character of tree with the water uh, sort of integrated in that character. It's not unusual. It's very unusual. It's not uh, usually. It's a wood with the trees. And uh, I guess it can be implied as a meaning of the timely water when the tree needs water. So in the desert, in the drought situation, the water will come. So that's the Xu stand for. And then for Wen Yu, and that's even bigger scope, Yu means the universe. And Wen Yu means using your culture, your humanities to try to conquer the, the universe. So that's the other names uh, imply for that. Just try to share that with you. And uh, when I asked them about what would be the next project they would like to do, and they told me that uh, they would like to do a project that deal with nature closely and then the reuse the material, both old and new deconstructed, uh, demolished materials, and then colorful and, but traditional and uh, exploratory, especially for northern part of China. That's what they would like to do for the next projects. And uh, I also asked him to give some advice to our young future architects, uh, students. And then their first word was that uh, to face the real world, not imaginary, but uh, deal with the fact and try to be brave enough and determined and uh, taking action, okay? And not to be discouraged and find solutions to realize your design. And that's their word to the future you know, architects. So, Beside the studio, they were both teaching at the Chinese Academy of Arts, and then where um, Wang Xu is the dean, and uh, Wang Yu is a professor there. And they say they spend about a third of time at, on education in schools, a third of time on their project, and another third of time dealing with their exhibit, exhibition and publications. So that's pretty much very heavy. I think they need 48 hours a day, of course. So, um, so it is my great honor to welcome Dad Wang Xu and uh, Liu Wen Yu uh, to be come up to the stage and uh, to receive this uh, 2019 Thousand Deltas, the highest recognition of gold medals, and with a certificate of the becoming an honorary member of our society. Please. And, I ask our Vice President, um, Michelle, to help me.
，我们全对它进行一遍清理和替换，这是非常可怕。就是你设计的时候是为谁而设计？因为这里就牵扯到了是一个出租户组成的一个社区。那么出租户的社区是什么样的一个生活形态？他们实际上是悄悄的在侵占一点公共的空间，因为他们里面的空间太小了。这些人恰恰是有社区交流的精神生活的。我们能不能给这些？低收入的人在这个区域里头设计出某种我称之为“立锥之地”的结构，对吧？我们讨论的问题就是说，这些东西其实是违法的，因为人说是 illegal 的，对不对？我们要让这些不合法的东西，经过我们的工作、我们的帮助，使它变成合法。This is a short video, in fact, about our a new project in the last year. Uh, we do the struggle, want to keep some. Uh, in fact, it's not old building; it's thought very new building, just we built 15 years ago. But in China, everything changed so fast. The 15 years old building become old. So, the the the, the government uh, in our city in the Last year, they want to demolish the 100 and the 70 city villages like this within one year. It's a large scale demolition. So we want to keep someone, and uh, we uh, discuss with the government, and we do the struggle about this. Finally, we lost, in fact. But we just show this video, like the people here, a little bit understand what's the real reality in China. What's the architect real fast to the real reality? But uh, my English is not so good, but I have to stand here to speak along because my wife, usually, <laughs> he like to stand back of me, similar to a secret. So today I want to talk about this, uh, how to fast to the real reality to design and to teach architecture in, in China. We want to talk about some of our experience. Maybe uh, you can feel it's, uh, it's kind of some help feeling for you. Our studio's name is Architecture, Amateur Architecture Studio, uh, because you know in China, I think professional architecture field is really very bad, in fact. That's why we talk, our studio is Amateur Architecture Studio. Yeah, it's amateur architect, me and my wife. It's, it's our campus, we teach here. And this is our one-to-one -one models in, I think it's 2010. Before we go to the Venice Benali, we do the uh, experiment in the campus. It's, it's uh, our best way. Before we do any formal and large project, we do small one-to-one experiment about materials, about basic uh, techniques, craftsmanship. And uh, usually, the people want to know China. But uh, the basic question is, uh, what is the real social reality in China now, today? For example, this Beijing. I think your, your director can feel it's totally no any relation to China, in fact. It's an international metropolis and uh, in anywhere in the world. But you you not be sure this Beijing. Of course, we can see the Ram Kuha's CCTV. Yeah, this is very, it's a landmark. It's a Shanghai. In the Shanghai, I think at least we have 10,000 high-rise building, more than 200 meters high. In one city, you, you, can, you can't imagine what happened. It just happened in the past 30 years, in fact. It's Hangzhou. Uh, usually, when, when you ask the Chinese, they will talk, talk about to you, usually Chinese think Hangzhou is the most beautiful city in China. It's a landscape city. But now, 
you, you can see in the far distance, the, the large city, full of the high-rise buildings there. It's my family home in Beijing. In fact, it's the 2012. In the morning, I got the Prisca Prize in Grand Hall. And after the ceremony, I go to my family house. They will be demolished, you know, like this. I, I, I spent my child, childhood time in 1960 here. But now, it's totally disappeared. It's Shanghai, another Shanghai. And it's a old apartment buildings. They were built in the 1930s, I think 1930 and 1940s. It's a totally another world. It's Hangzhou. When we talk about Hangzhou, it's a landscape city, but now you can see the city like this. So many small buildings be demolished because Hangzhou, I think, now is the most popular city in China. Last year, they sell the, the biggest money about sell the land last, last year in China, and uh, they, they need the new land to, to build the high-rise building, and they, build, they destroyed so many things here. And what is lost by our city? It's a basic question. We build so many high-rise buildings, so large-scale cities, the shining uh, with the glass, the steel, huge, and the big road, very wide road, and uh, large-scale landscape, gardens. But what is the basic things we lost in the cities? I think it's a common people. It's a common life. I think it's the most serious problem now in China. Where is our, co our common people? Where is our common life? It's a city, but another side, in China we have another world called countryside. It's a totally separate from the city. What about what happened in the village, in the countryside? In the same time, we can see some old village there, and some new village every day they build, the new village like this. And uh, of course, the new village is quite good. It's a new building, very clean environment, and uh, uh, good urban planning. But where is our continuity as our culture, our local culture? Almost no people ask this question. Usually, Chinese like to talk about we have a long history. 5,000 years or 3,000 years, we like to talk about this. We, we, we like to talk about the imagination of our Chinese culture and history. For example, this is the Hangzhou 1,000 years ago. This is the Hangzhou. So beautiful. Old city similar to an invisible city, mixed with the landscape. It's the third of the Hangzhou like this. It's a famous painting, 900 years ago, it's a famous painting about the Serb area of Hangzhou, like this. So this is a really concrete of opinion. What's the reality and what is the history, uh, our past life and uh, memory and experience? You know, another side, we also feel this concrete between <coughs> architectural education and the practice. I'm the young architect, in fact, in China very young, and uh, I learned architecture in the 1980s, late 1980s. In the late 1980s and uh, 1990s, that time, in China, almost no any young architect, no, no any private architecture office in that time. All the design field be controlled by the National Design Institute, large scale, usually they have several hundred and several thousand architect and engineer working together. It's huge. They occupied everything. No chance for young, young, young guy like me and my wife. In the up, it's my early work in the late of 1980s. This is my first work. They finished in, uh, after my graduate from the school. And the dawn, that work is my professor's work. He's the national master uh, designed a large-scale monument building, historic style, very powerful, tutorial control the system. And in the late of 1990s, a little bit changed. The up is my second uh, big work in the late of 1990s. And 
Dawn, that work is a new Shanghai History Museum. It means the new approach for the old generation. They also do some new approach. So the Dawn, that one, uh, another kind different monumental building, it's, it means uh, something changed. Till now, I think that young generation, for example, like me and my wife, we get a chance. It's, uh, the reason, I think, is come from the reform. In China, we have the large-scale reform. And in the late 1990s, for example, the very short time, they have the reform about education system. They allow the university can do some, uh, can, can let some uh, private in investment go into the high uh, university systems. So they have some uh, private uh, university start in that time. Then we have a different client. Then the client, are, they want some different things. That's why suddenly we have the chance. But it's a very short time, only, I think, 10 years. Then government closed the door again. Yeah, in the very short time, we get the chance. Then we, we emerged. So that's the China. After 2000, the big change, more big change. For example, the Dong, you can see the picture is uh, Beijing's CBD. All the Chinese architects start to do the modern works. They, they learn everything very fast. They learn the modern architecture system. And they build huge cities. And you can see the high-rise building, almost no different from the outside of China, from the Western world. It's a new, new city, large scale, in all of China emerged. <coughs> but that time, we start to think about different things. Where is our tradition? Where, are, where is our local country? Where is our memory? Where is our real experience from our hand and our body? The app is our start, very small work in 2000. We start this uh, ramp earth small buildings and directly done by me and my wife with some craftsmen together. It's very small, very tiny, but for us, it's very important start point, I think. Then in the 2002 to 2007, that time, we start our education approach. At the same time, we, we win the competition about the new campus of a National Art Academy in Hangzhou. I, finally, I think why we can win this competition, uh, apart from our design really good. Another reason is uh, they almost no design free, you know. In the, about within 10 years, we designed more than 200,000 square meters, no money. But they give me totally free. We can do anything. <laughs> So, it's good. We have the new chance. This is our new campus. You can see it's uh, in the new server of the Hangzhou. And basically the idea is that we talk about the, the relation between the, the beautiful landscape painting about our city a thousand years ago, a very famous painting, and the new reality, new situation in our campus site. So we do the parallel thinking between the painting and architectural environment. You can see the Birdville, the old, it's very large. It's just the half of the campus, then the another half in the, another side of the, of the hills. You can see the, the pink one, it's just, just the finished new one, is uh, of the Xizas New Museum, just the finish. In the middle area, all this campus designed by our studio. Me and my wife and uh, another six as young assistants together. We are working for this campus for 10 years. Every day we worked to, to three o'clock, three o'clock at night, almost no sleep, 10 years, but almost no money. This is our architecture school. We start this new architecture school because our system, original, the old system, uh, education system, really very bad, very boring. I hate that. So we start a new one here in the art academy. Art in China means a little bit more freedom. So that's why we've, we come to here to start the new experiment of, about education. There's almost no money here, but they give me chance to design and build this campus. 
then also they give, me, give us several buildings, space. You can do something here, but almost no money. This is our ex uh, material experiment center. This is our architecture department. And we teach here. In the beginning, in the 19, I think 2001, we start this approach. And in the beginning, only me, one teacher, with 20 students. And in 2002, I got uh, the first visiting professor work with me together. That time, he's an artist, not so famous. But now, he's incredible famous. His name is Avi V. He's my first visiting professor, work with me together. But now, he's too, too famous, no time to teach again. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, you can see. Uh, we, we teach, start from the hand training. For example, this is uh, teaching about uh, drawing. It's teach my, by my wife and some young assistant. Usually, we, we, we like the people to directly face to the site to give the drawing for the Chinese garden. Like the students directly build the, the basic feeling from the Chinese tradition and the real environment. And another side, we use a very traditional way to teach again. For example, rendering. This is our students' work. It's directly fast to the real gardens and do this rendering. It means very difficult, in fact. Very high skill training for students. This, my, my, my wife, she teach this. We do the last, last Two years ago, we do a very successful exhibition about this in our academy museum. Another important work for us is the Ningbo History Museum. It's been finished in 2008. <laughs> it's the best, we built the best working way uh, through this project is uh, how do the research from the local uh, architectural tradition. For example, we find this village here very beautiful village here. Uh, we find some uh, interesting tradition about the recycle construction. In fact, recycle construction is not our invention. It, 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 we find this in the Chinese tradition, in fact. In this village near the sea, we find this village. They, they used so many different kinds of recycled material to build their house. Because in that area, they have, every year they have the typhoon. In the summer, the big wind, the building will collapse. And they need, they need very fast to rebuild. So they use all kind, different kind of material from the rings of the architecture to rebuild. They gradually they develop some very beautiful scales about recycle construction. Yeah, this one is our new way. We mix this tradition and with some uh, uh, new change together. For example, the red one is now the traditional materials. It's a new one. It's, it's an old material from the 1960s building. It's a new tiles made by machine, the right one. And we mix it with the recycle the traditional material together because some new things. It's a very typical situation. It's, uh, you will find this museum is in the edge of the city, fast to the village area. In fact, it's more similar to the tide movement. The, the city extends bigger and bigger. And uh, when our building be finished, some more high-rise building be built. There is the new CBD for the cities. In this building, another thinking is about the uh, uh, continuity from the tradition uh, feeling. This is a beautiful landscape painting in Song Dynasty. And we design this new building directly compared to this old painting. And uh, I think the ne next month in, the, in, in, the, um, in a magazine called Log, L-O-G, I have a paper talk about this idea uh, between the painting and the architecture. Yeah, it's my, you, you, you can read my new paper about that. In fact, it's a new building. It's a, you just can feel some uh, 
basic feeling from the painting, and but our basic way is uh, we don't copy anything. We don't copy old building. We don't copy painting. We don't copy any new building. We don't copy anything. We just uh, get idea come from some uh, element mm, imagination. Finally, some something new, totally new, emerged. It's our best way. For example, here you can see uh, we directly use the recycled bricks, tiles, and the special way about concrete together. The concrete we cause the concrete use the bamboo model to cause like the concrete become uh, have the more emotional emotional feelings and more sensitive feelings about nature. Of course, it's not easy. All the process is not easy. We do the experiment about the wall, concrete, and the bricks with the craftsmen together. I remember 27 times we taught our standard. <laughs> this means we spent a lot of time to do the experiment again and again. Yeah, of course, another side, the good client is very important. This client, they have enough patience to, <laughs> to do the experiment with us together. The usually, you can't imagine the patient can let you do the experiment to 27 times. Yeah, it's terrible. This means money, this means time. Inside the space is more, you give the more modern feeling, very high efficient machine similar to, and we design the very uh, exciting public space, like the people can walk in here and uh, have some meeting here meet a friend. It's very funny when the building be finished, many old people come to visit. Why? It's a very good question is why. Why is the old people like this building? One time I, I meet one old lady. He tell me after the museum be uh, uh, opened uh, within four months, he come to visit four times. He tell me the exhibition is really terrible. It's too bad. Exhibition is too bad. But the exhibition design is by uh, is not by us. It's by the other people. <laughs> but, but she come to visit the buildings because he directly touched the wall, tell me, you can find this part. It's so similar to my courtyard wall. His courtyard had been demolished. Originally in this area, they have a 30 old village. And when they start this construction, they had uh, demolished, the government had demolished 29. And we used all the materials come from the rings and rebuilt this, muse this museum. I, 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 I give the best idea, like the client, believe me, because I tell to me, what meaning about museum? Museum is about memory, in fact. It's about time, how we keep the time. We keep the memory in this building. So it's a family when they use the recycled material to construct all this building. This building is itself is the biggest collection for this museum. The family, they gave me strong support to finish this. At the same time, we do some new approach about teaching. For example, in 2002, it's our first group of students, the first time. Uh, design course. I teach this small course, eight weeks course with IVV together. Like the students use the recycled Coca-Cola bottle, <laughs> plastic bottle to build this uh, small pavilion. This is the basic, basic idea about other education. It's not just about tradition, past. It's about, it's about some uh, new way like the, everything can be recycled. As our students, every year they do some uh, basic training about hand working. It's about uh, bricks. Oh, this is my song, working with us together. <laughs> yeah, T today my son also came to here. And uh, the students works every year. They demolish and rebuild because we only have this small place. So every year we do this. This is another one, new approach. 
we use the new materials, earth, bamboo, <coughs> and wood. It's our campus' new uh, guest house. We developed a new system with the earth construction, new earth construction, and the wood structure, new wood structure, wood timbers. It's not, it's, the people get some feeling from the Chinese tradition, but in fact, almost no, no anything directly comes from Chinese tradition. Yeah, this is our basic way. Yeah, you can see this structure. The Chinese directly can get some feeling from the tradition, but it's not tradition. It's, it's totally new, in fact. Like this. We also do some uh, teaching at the same time. For example, in the first year students, apart from the wood and uh, bricks, the stone, they also have this construction training about earth construction. It's very interesting. The students really love the course like this. That's carpenter training, earth construction, brick construction, everything. They are so happy about that. The, some basic feeling, I think, be awake from their body, I think, is about wood. Now we have more and more female students, even more than 70% 70, 70 students is a female. But now the young girl is really very powerful. You can see, do <laughs> everything here. Do the wood, the bamboo, and the bricks. You know, incredible, powerful. Everywhere you can find some uh, students tiny experiment in the campus. And we have an exhibition hall, and uh, every year and every semester we do some new exhibition. Usually it's a student's work. After we got the prize, Prisca Prize, and many, many, many people will give the best question to us is uh, how you can give the more contribution to the society. In fact, in that time, we had to give the answer. Originally, our studio, because we keep the studio scale very small, and uh, till to now, still within 10 people. But every year in China, everybody know, we only get accept one new commission. But after 2012, we got a prize we got more and more pressure about this. You should do more. <laughs> but now we do, uh, we get, every year we accept two new commissions. It's been the double. And in fact, it's three. We do another more. Usually it's uh, village work. It's more similar to some uh, uh, real contribution, <laughs> free contribution, in fact. This is our contribution to the village. It's near Hangzhou, the place. Very typical village now in China. They mix old building and new building together like this. Very typical. And uh, the people, they want to change the environment. And uh, basically, they have uh, two different ways. One way, they demolish everything and they rebuild historic style, new village for tourists. This is the one way. Another way, they demolished everything, rebuilt the, the villa groups, <laughs> similar to the developer project, basically like this. And we gave the basic discussion is uh, how we can keep the original village texture and how we can keep almost every old building and like the new village can naturally develop, similar to grow, something grows from the old one some new one grows from the old, old village. How we can do that? It's our work, be finished. You can see in the, in the distance, it's old village. Near this part, it's new part. The new part directly grows from the old part. It's the new part. When the first time come to this village, they show a, a master plan to me, they want build 15 farmer house here. A little bit similar to the American house in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I have seen something like that. 
15. Then I tell to the local people, it's too luxurious for Chinese because we have so many people, we, we don't have enough land, so we have to learn from the, our tradition. The old village, they have more high density and uh, more crowded, but people, they have a more close relation to each other, neighborhood. So finally, I, we do the new design, 24 new farmer house here. Yeah. So it means a little bit uh, crowded, but the people get more near feeling. And we rebuild the, uh, the small, tiny courtyard system, you know? Another different thing is every new farmer house built by farmers themselves, they abandoned courtyard system. In China, courtyard is not just means courtyard. Courtyard means continuity of the country. Something just happened inside the courtyard. If no courtyard, almost no Chinese culture. It's the very basic things. This is why I rebuilt this tiny courtyard system, only 10 square meters, small one, but they have. You can see we designed a new house. This is the old one, 100 years ago, Qing Dynasty, old building. They directly put together. They have some uh, real relation between each other, but very clear, something is old, something is new. It's a different generation. Inside, you can see the basic difference is uh, in the old village, the car can't go in. This is the new village. The scale is a little bit different. They have a narrow route, but the car can go in. Then they have a small space can park in the car in, uh, near the building like this. The different scale. Like this. Another idea is when we want to give the keep the feeling about variety. Not just one model and repeat, repeat. We designed eight different models and every model we have a three basic change by materials, by some details. Finally, we get 24 farmhouse. We get 24 different prototypes. Yeah, this is the farmer. He's very happy, I think. Very proud. We rebuilt this system along this stream. It's another important counter is along the stream in China. We call the water area. It's in, the people start to have new life. They use the building to continue their common life. They park in the cars. They have a tiny courtyard here. They design the interior space, interior space by themselves. Very funny. This guy, they tell me, they learned the basic idea from, from our building. So he used the mud plaster on the wall and <laughs> do something. A really funny idea. You can see some local food here. It's the uh, new space for Mary, this culture. At the same time, I also do some teaching. For example, in the past three years, we do this teaching program with the Southeast University Architecture School and MIT in the South Zhejiang province. So every year we have this summer program and the three school students come together, spend three or four weeks together in the village. They do the research and they learn the basic skills about constructing with the local people together. They do the mock-up to think about some new structure and uh, they do the competition. Finally, we choose one. Maybe they have four groups. We choose one group, win the competition, then that the local people will built this, become a real things. After half year, the building be built. This is our first one in the three years ago. It's a toilet, public toilet, but finally, it just means a small toilet, but a big public space. <laughs> the people can meet, 
meeting here. And the, the students, they, they learn some uh, details from the village, design this big water pond. The, the, the local women, they wash the clothes here, then dialogue to each other, similar to some community center, finally. Really funny. This is our another work. Uh, it's, a it's a huge work in the Fuyang counter complex, about 40,000 square meters. In fact, this work parallel to the, the village project. That's why the farmers, they feel they're so proud. Be be because we use the basic material, same material, same craftsmanship techniques, totally same with the, with the village. Then we use this, build this public new museum here. So the farmer feel, oh, you can see, our village similar to that museum. The material is the same. The craftsmanship is the same. They get the new confidence and the proud. You can say, oh, this museum is similar to a landscape. We get the idea, basic idea, come from the Chinese landscape painting. You can see the different feeling about perspective. It means uh, in China we call this Ping Yuan. It means a different layer. All the building, they have a different layer from a near place gradually to the far distance mountain. You directly can feel this feeling, connect. We also use the recycled materials with the local stone together. All this roof is more similar to a place that the people can go on, can do some uh, uh, activity on the roof, maybe, for example, a music concert, something like this, dancing. This is another new museum just finished in another small city near Ningbo. It's called the Shili Hongzhuang uh, Museum. It's an uh, exhibition about traditional dowry, especially, especially have the relation to the formal space, traditional formal space. Yeah, you can see the Ninghai. It's a small city. It's my sketch. Usually in our studio, I and with Wen Yu, we, we discuss basic idea, but I do more about drawing. It's uh, last year, past 10 years struggle and construction, very slow process. Finally, this work, this work be finished. We designed this old building similar to a village, in fact, on the hills. They have a very interesting vista line for the visitor. It's the entrance. They have a different layer entrance. I designed this small building. Uh, in Chinese tradition, usually we call this young girl's building. <laughs> It's for the young girls. Before they're married, they're living in this small, beautiful towers because they can see the outside world, call the wall to see the outside world because they can't go out. So we call this small building Young Girls World. It's the entrance. They have very rich experience about different layer. and very sensitive trend about colors. We used the six different cans, local stone, to build different feeling about different layer. This wall is a black stone. It's very beautiful. It's a roof, we use the bamboo, and we use a wood screen. Another different wall about the different uh, round wall from the river. It's the inside, inside space. You can see the different wall, they have a different materials. Got a feeling about different layer. Because we, we do the construction for 10 years, finally when the building be opened, the new world become old world. <laughs> you can see the world become old. Yeah, another different way about materials come from the local tradition. The inside. Mm. 
Yeah, that's the concrete. We use the, another different texture bamboo to cast the concrete on site. We also do the de interior design. The usually, it's our best way we do the architecture design, interior design, landscape design, three things together. It's a garden for the orange trees. Small garden. Finish. <laughs> so Wang Shu will take some questions if anybody would like to ask a question or make some comments. Uh, it's a, I think it's a basic question now in the, for the global situation because architects, many architects especially star architects, they work in a different area of architecture design and how we can really design something they have real connection to the local cultures, traditions, people's, people's life. I think the basic feeling is, uh, I got this feeling in the 1990s. In, in that time, in China, young architecture as me, as my wife, almost no any chance. We can't get any commission, in fact. We have to do the small, very small works about old buildings renovation. In the 1990s, we do a lot of small works about renovation for old buildings. That's why all the 1990, our work list is empty because all our work in the 1990s has been demolished, in fact, <laughs> with our work together <laughs> be demolished. But we learned some very important things in the 1990s is a basic attitude when do any design, before we do any design, something before us exists. This is the basic attitude when they do the renovation works. You directly have to face some real uh, materials, people's life, real experience. It's more important than any strange idea from our brain. This is the basic attitude I think we should, we should have. If, if you have this attitude, your basic idea, opinion about architecture will be totally changed. That's the why. Now, tell you a secret. What our basket way? We design any new building similar to do some uh, renovation for imagine existing building. That's our basket way. Every new building similar to the renovation. In fact, it's, uh, in, in, the, in, in the big city in China, we have more, more and more large population now. And uh, maybe we have to build some high-rise building, in fact. Uh, of course, it, uh, about 10 years ago, I and uh, my students, uh, graduated students, we do uh, research in our city, Hangzhou. Hangzhou is uh, not so big city. We only have nine million population and uh, <coughs> we have to build a high-rise building, <laughs> so many high-rise building. But finally we find if we have a, a little bit higher density for urban planning, all the Hangzhou, we just need at most eight floor building. Eight floor is enough. In fact, we don't need any high-rise, in fact. But the, when the high-rise becomes something similar to uh, better dream, something like this, you know, that's why the people like high-rise. They want some uh, new life similar to the different, better, uh, something like this. Uh, I think for the architect, we still have some space to do something 
for that. For example, in a, uh, mm, between the 2000 and 2007, we also designed a, a group of high-rise buildings in Hangzhou. We designed a new system called the two-coil, two-floor culture system. We designed many, uh, we call a culture box. Everyone is a two-floor two height, about six meters. And we just designed some uh, basic building inside. For example, there's uh, the uh, kitchen and uh, 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 toilet, something like this. Then we keep the space, like the, like the people, they can, they can rebuild the, the, some new building inside. There's something, some idea like this. We call the, uh, not sell the apartment to the people, they sell the land on the sky <laughs> to the people to build a new high-rise village. But the basic idea is uh, in the, any floor, you get the feeling is uh, just a two-floor height. It's a basic feeling like this. Then you have some uh, tiny land, plant some uh, trees, and even some, uh, you can do some tiny agriculture activity there, something like this. It's more important than, than the form and the shape, I think. And uh, when, when we do this, uh, the people don't, don't, don't believe that it really happened. And they thought this better idea is just, uh, just a story. But now, if you come to Hangzhou, you will find the people really do that. They do so many small construction in the high-rise building. <laughs> it's, it's really funny now. But at this time, oh, it's pity. I should take this, this, this project to come to here, show it to you. OK. I think it's a, the, the windows, why the windows like, look like that? Because it's experience. Yeah, and very carefully think about the experience. The people from the inside to see the outside. How let the people see from the outside to the inside. It's very carefully to see. Maybe they have a bird view. Maybe you can give the horizontal view. Sometimes you can a little bit the view like this. Architecture is a really very funny toy, in fact. You can, you can use this element to adjust the people's experience, in fact. It's very funny. You will feel. In fact, the campus, Xiangshan campus, campus is for teaching. I'm an architect, so I, I design a building for teaching, in fact. Like the students and the teachers, they very e easily can find some example. What's the feeling about large space? What's the feeling about narrow? What's the feeling? You, you, that some people even find, we designed the stairs, the two different parts of stairs. The hat is different. The stepped hat is different. The people ask me, why you design the stairs? The height, the, the, every step, the height is different. I tell to them, you will feel you have food. You get <laughs> real feeling, right? It's the building for teaching. In our teaching, in our architecture school, we encourage uh, our teacher and the students, they do the uh, uh, theory thinking and the practice together, parallel. It's the best way. And writing and uh, uh, hand doing parallel. So any, any time we do some different things parallel, like this, it's the best way. On the other side, we keep, we start the education from the hand making. It's the, best, it's, it's the basement for us. Then gradually more and more talking about uh, different theory and the practice, different way. We want to keep the uh, atmosphere is uh, it's, uh, totally open. Maybe in China, you will find our school is the most open architecture school. Yeah. We want one side, we're looking for the local tradition. Another side, we're looking for the all over the world, totally open. We open to the local, 
we are open to the global. That like is basic idea. And I just can't give the simple, simple answer like this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>